Looking for magic cards or magic carps? On the new CFB Marketplace you can buy sealed products and singles directly from local game stores. Support the channel by using the referral code LVD at checkout. Hello and welcome to another Historic Brawl gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a blue-green Alonus Cryptozoologist deck. The 2-mana 1-2 Legendary Snake Elf Scout says whenever another non-token creature enters a battlefield under your control, we get to investigate, meaning we get a clue artifact token that we can pay 2 mana and sacrifice to draw a card. We can also tap Lonus and sacrifice X clue tokens, and then target opponent reveals the top X card of their library, and we may put a non-land permanent card with mana value X or less from among them onto the battlefield under our control. So Lonus can provide a ton of value, and our deck is sort of built around it, in the sense that we have a lot of artifact synergies, we've got token synergies, and of course Lonus creates those clue tokens. We've got a lot of mana acceleration, so if we take a look at our creatures here, we'll do a quick overview, I'm not going to go over every card in detail, but we see Dockhand for card advantage, Goose for mana, alongside Sentinel, Lanor Elves for more ramp, then the Glimmer Baron can sacrifice tokens to get plus two plus two, so can sacrifice those clues. Ovia also cares about the number of creatures we control. Then at two mana we've got the Parcel Mirror, which also counts as a clue. So there's a bit of synergy there. Weaponsmith for ramp. We've got Visionary and the Wall of Blossoms that draw a card when they enter the battlefield. Got a few ways of blinking our creatures. Then a ton of mana creatures here, as you can see at two mana, to accelerate us. Then we've got Woodland Champion that picks up plus one plus one counters whenever a token enters the battlefield under our control, so great with those clue tokens as well. More mana acceleration, then Hydroid Grace is just a nice mana sink. Then at three mana we've got cards like Animating Fairy and the Skilled Animator that can turn our artifacts into large creatures. Ethereum Spinner makes 1-1 one -one Thopter tokens when we cast expensive cards. Both Exclusion Mage and Mana War as a bit of interaction, bouncing a creature. The Tracker makes a clue token when it enters a battlefield. We've got the Visionary for more ramp and card draw. Reclamation Sage to deal with artifacts and enchantments. Provisioner can also generate a lot of artifact tokens. And then more ramp with the Engineer. Then at 4 mana we've got Thassa to blink our creatures and provide a lot of value. The Whirler Rogue makes two 1-1 one -one Thopter tokens and can make our creatures unblockable. And then we can potentially use that ability multiple times, so it's actually deceptively powerful. Then we've got Oracle, kind of a staple in every green deck, providing a ton of value as well. Cultivator for more ramp, alongside Solemn Simulacrum as well. Then at 5 mana we've got Wave Sifter, which we can evoke for 2 mana, just to make 2 clue tokens, but we can also cast it at 5, so great value creature similar to Moldrifter, which we're also playing. Then the Thraktusk can also leave behind a 3-3 token, can gain a lot of life, a great target to blink with Thassa. And then the Mesmerizing Benthid also makes a bunch of O2 Illusion tokens. Then topping off our curve, we've got Shimmer Dragon, probably one of the most powerful cards if we can get it going. Has Hexproof as long as we control four or more artifacts, and we can tap two untapped artifacts we control to draw a card. So we can easily churn through our entire deck by tapping some of our clue tokens to draw cards. Then we can usually cast Zahid for four mana. We've got Kogla giving us a bit of interaction, and then we've got a bunch of creatures that we can cast on the cheap thanks to affinity for artifacts or a similar ability. So Thought Monitor, a 2-2 that draws two cards with flying. Mirror Enforcer we can potentially cast for free if we control seven or more artifacts. We've got Junkwinder, also has affinity for tokens, so this one cares about controlling lots of tokens. And then whenever a token enters a battlefield under our control, we get to tap target non-land permanent and opponent controls, and it doesn't untap during its controller's next untap step, so a very powerful ability in this deck. And Gearseeker Serpent also basically has affinity for artifacts, a nice 5-6 that can become unblockable. And last but not least, Koma also generates lots of tokens and is just a powerful curve topper with all the ramp we have in the deck. Then taking a look at some of our non-creature spells, we've got more acceleration with Mox Amber and Arcane Signet at 2 mana. Hard Evidence also makes a clue token and a crab token, so 2 tokens for 1 mana. We've got a Rise and Shine, which we're often going to overload for 6 mana, turning all our non-creature artifacts into 4-4 four, four creatures essentially, so this can be a great finisher. This will give all our tokens flying, and we can turn any token into a 4-4 beast, which will then fly as well. Then we've got Metallic Rebuke as the only counter spell in the deck with Improvise, so we can cast it for just a single blue mana if we can tap two artifacts we control. 
Chitter Spitter can generate a whole bunch of squirrel tokens. We've got Olfenwald Mysteries, saying whenever a non-token creature we control dies, we get to investigate. And whenever we sacrifice a clue, we can create a 1-1 one, one white human soldier creature token. So we can potentially use Lonis' ability, sacrifice a whole bunch of clues, and make a whole bunch of human soldiers with the Mysteries. Then Inspiring Statuary is another nice one, saying non-artifact spells we cast have Improvise. So we can tap some of our clue tokens to help cast some of our non-artifact spells. Nettle Cyst also grows with the number of artifacts we control. And then at 4 mana we've got the nerfed Asika's Chariot, still quite good as it works with both the token theme and the artifact theme. And Parallel Lives will double all the tokens we get. Karn Sign of Urza also cares about how many artifacts we control to make giant Karnstruct tokens and can provide Karn advantage as well. Then Panharmonicon can also double the number of triggers we get, can potentially double the tokens from Lonus. Then at 5 we've got Dollhouse of Horrors to reanimate some of our creatures and turn them into big constructs. And Tezzeret's Artifice Master can also draw lots of cards, especially if we control 3 or more artifacts. And then the mana base is pretty straightforward. No Field of the Dead anymore, so no reason to play Snow Lands. And just lots of dual lands to make sure our mana base works properly. One new Alchemy card here with the Forsaken Crossroads. So yeah, that's about it. No creature lands, since I think those are kind of overrated in Brawl in general, since you have so many mana sinks, especially being able to replay your commander over and over. And in this deck, particularly, we've got a lot of clue tokens we can always sacrifice as well. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. All right, we're on the draw, and we're up against a Trellisara life gain deck. My hands... Okay, not amazing, but we'll try it. So, can play the Expanse on one, and this will be our untap plan on turn two, since we're on the draw here. So Trellsara is going to become very large very quickly. I could play Florahedron to develop my mana early. Although I'm also short on lands, so I could just play Lunas. And then Mox Amber can also start making mana. Next turn go Champion, plus maybe something else. Close decision. I guess I'll play Lonus for now. And then I can decide next turn what to do with a Florahedron. The Benthid will be a good way to slow down the beatdown from Trellisara. Passage still comes into play tapped. So just gonna be champion so it can start growing. And Florahedron as a tap land. And then next turn I could play Benthid already thanks to Mox Amber. So for now we're taking a bit of damage, but opponent's not doing anything too busted. I'll hang on to Fable Passage in case we need a shuffle effect later. So champion getting nice and large can start attacking, and then the illusions can block Trellisara. Next turn, should be able to play a nice cheap Gear Seeker Serpent, plus maybe a Brybridge Tracker. And then once we're on empty, we can either use Lunas's ability or start sacrificing clue tokens. The Ascendant 
becomes scary at 30 or more life, so the Solmander can get there. But should be able to tank with the Woodland Champion. Opponent's gonna keep Trollsara back, makes sense. Ooh, Ulvenwald Mysteries is not bad once we start sacking clue tokens, but for this turn... I think we're still going to add more creatures to the board. And play Gearseeker. Okay, so Champion can attack. Potent could double block, I guess that's fine by me. Right, just a chump. And then next turn I'll play the Ulvenwald Mysteries. And we can start digging. Speakers, why they wanted to keep their life total high, makes sense. So... I want to try and keep up the pressure. Gear Seeker we could make unblockable if we pay 6 mana. But then our opponent can still activate Speaker potentially. Panharmonican. So Artifactor creature entering the battlefield. So it's mostly doubling our clue tokens from Lunas right now. Yeah, this is tricky. So if I hit the opponent for 5 down to 32... They can still activate Speaker next turn, plus they have a life they can gain with Solmander. So maybe the play is Ulvenwald Mysteries. And then attack with Woodland Champion, and try and trick the opponent into blocking with Trellisara, since they can grow it with a Solmander, and then we can use Lonus' ability to make a whole bunch of 1-1s one that grow the champion. Okay. So, sacrifice how many clues? Let's say... a good number, 4 maybe. Would have been nice to have Panharmonican in play first, but this should be just fine. And then we hit either Presence or Honor Troll. I guess Presence isn't bad. And then put that on Gear Seeker. go to damage. So our opponent can grow Trail Sara. Could also be one of these situations where I should have tried to attack with everyone just to lower their life total. And then we'll turn this into a 4-4. Angel of Destiny. That's incredibly scary. So the Angel can win them the game next turn. What's the best I can do here? Can play Statuary to play a cheap Animating Fairy. Gear Seeker could lower their life total. So just want to try and make as many tokens as possible. 
using Lunas's ability, perhaps. Which involves needing to play creatures, so we're back to playing Animating Fairy. But I don't have the mana to Panharmonicon plus Fairy. So I guess it's just Thatchery plus Fairy, or it could Fairy crack a clue, but it doesn't leave much mana. So attack with everyone at this point, except Lonus and the Illusions. And then I could still use Lonus. to make extra 1-1s. One so is that better than dealing the 4 damage with a clue token? If I, let's say, use Lunas for x equals 2, then I get to make two 1-1s, one which grow Champion as well as Gearseeker Serpents. Or I can deal the 4 of the clue. I guess we'll go digging here. Could also just do it for one, but then I'm pretty likely to miss. Alright, we missed anyway. So our opponent's at 24. Can chum block with animating fairy if necessary. Currently, they're unable to activate speaker. So I'm fine with a chump. Alright, and our opponent packs it in. So, close game here with Angel of Destiny almost taking over, but uh, the value engine of Ulvenwald Mysteries is quite good in combination with our commander. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing off against a Hapatra, minus one, minus one counter deck. And we've got a keep. Turn two, probably want to play Incubation Druid first. And then I can maybe follow up with Lunas, although that being said, I'm not going to be doing much on the following turn, so maybe it's still fine to play Lunas first to start making extra clues. And then Incubation Druid Mox Amber will give me a lot of mana on the following turn to potentially play a Dollhouse or some of our blue 7 drops. Now that I drew Wall of Blossoms, I'm back on playing Incubation Druid first. And then next turn go Lonus into Wall of Blossoms. And the Woodland Champion will be a nice addition. So, can block Hapatra with our wall. And Journey to Eternity. Okay. Thought Monitor can potentially be quite cheap. So, if I play Woodland Champion. Get to make an extra token. This will cost four. So still not quite enough to cast it. Yeah, I guess we'll just cast the Thought Monitor then. Hit 
hit our land drop. And then next turn should be able to double spell. Inventor Sphere will gain life as well. Ooh, stinging shots on the Thought Monitor takes it out and makes a 1 1 Death Touch Snake token. And Smell Fear can take out my wall. So now Hapatra can attack and potentially put a minus one counter somewhere. Opponent puts the minus one counter on Lunas. And time for a Woodland Champion into Gear Seeker, or I could start locking down Hapatra with the Junkwinder, which is also an option. So can I Champion, which will make an extra token, and then we can still Junkwinder for four. Seems fine. Pass it back. Want to play Gear Seeker before sacking any clues to Lunas's ability. And then the Dollhouse will be pretty good with Thought Monitor and Wall in the Graveyard to reanimate. Reclamation. Can draw them some cards. Ooh, Rise and Shine. That's probably going to be our way to close out the game, so I'm less interested in sacrificing my clues now. Can play Dollhouse. Activate it, bring back Thought Monitor. Which is going to trigger all sorts of cards. And we'll lock down the snake token. Okay, and then... Probably leave the 1-1 one, one back just in case. Sure. And next turn we could rise and shine. Apatra attacks, so could jump it with Lunas to prevent it from transforming or jump it with Thought Monitor. Yeah, because they might want to transform Journey and I'm not sure what they can do afterwards. Probably nothing too devastating this turn, but it would also trigger the Reclamation. So yeah, I think I would have just jumped with Thought Monitor and then next turn Rise and Shine, very likely to just win the game. All right, sweet, on to the next one. All right, we're on the draw, facing off against a Lisa Forgotten Archangel deck, so maybe some sort of Angel or Sacrifice deck. My opening hand's great. Early Accelerance into Oracle, and then Shimmer Dragon, one of the best card draw engines, once we get a few clues with Lonis. Corpse Knights. So I could play an Ethereum Spinner, and then next turn if Elf is still alive, play Oracle, take it from there. Don't hate it. Or I could play another Leafkin. I think we wait on Lonus, even though I do want some clues in play for Shimmer Dragon. Leafkin devolves my mana, so that's never a bad thing here. Yeah, let's go with Leafkin, and then I hang on to Evolving Wilds as a way to shuffle my deck with Oracle, could come in handy. And I get to block the Corpse Knight for now. So 
So I'll play Oracle before playing a land in case there's a land on top. That also counts. And then... I guess just play an island here. Alright, so next turn... Lunas... Into a couple creatures to start making clues. Because I don't want to play Shimmer Dragon unless it has Hexproof when it comes into play. Cruel Celebrant, so definitely pointing towards some Sacrifice Synergies. I'll take four. Okay, so I could shuffle with Evolving Wilds. Tracker on top. Lunas into Spinner into Paradise Druids. And then next turn we can play our Dragon and have four artifacts in play. And then Shimmer Dragon with Clue Tokens is a great combo. So it can probably still afford to take four. Now I guess I do need to watch out for instant speed removal. Although let's see, this is when we cast. So I'll get the 1-1 one -one Thopter. This is also an artifact creature. So I'll actually have the four artifacts for hexproof before the dragon comes into play. And then play a tracker as well. Or I could draw with a shimmer dragon in case there's a land on top. Do this once again. Still no land. Probably go for Innkeeper now. And yeah, Shimmer Dragon's just gonna dominate this game. There's my land. There's another land. And can even play Seekas Chariots. So yeah, we can still draw with Shimmer Dragon, but I've already played my two lands, so hit for two and pass. Pontiff. And now the Innkeeper will gain a bit of life as well, so we don't die as easily to all these drain effects and our opponent has seen enough. So this was one of the better starts that our deck is capable of. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. Facing off against a Yarok, the Desecrated. Enters the battlefield trigger deck. Well, I do like Metallic Rebuke as interaction. Not really doing a whole lot early. Hopefully our opponent plays some artifact or enchantment we can destroy. I'll try it. So, ideally, draw into some cheap creatures early. For now, play Lunas. No real point in playing Mox Amber yet, as that wouldn't be able to keep up Rebuke. Alright, Gilded Goose gives me a target for Reclamation Sage, which might be fine here. Sadly, they've got removal for Lunas. So now I'm less excited about running out Reclamation Sage, but it's too soon to keep a Metallic Rebuke, so maybe Sage is still fine. And then next turn I can replay Lunas. Want to keep up Rebuke on the turn they could cast their commander. Alright, Lotus Cobra. Three mana available. And a Leafkin Druid. 
So this is a turn to keep up Metallic Rebuke. So that's not going to be too difficult. Right, it's going to be an Explorer, so no Yarok yet. If our opponent waits another turn, they might be able to pay for Metallic Rebuke, but I'm probably going to see Yarok now. Alright, so our one counter spell being very important here. Metal Cyst is nice, but when we can play Coma, we should probably play Coma. And pass it back. And Koma gets it done. Sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing off against the Sorin Life Gain Vampires deck. And we've got a Keeper, some early mana acceleration. Plus a Zahid we could cast early on. So turn two. I'm thinking probably Leafkin Druids. And then I can double spell on turn three. And then Zahid on turn four should be fine. Soren shows up. They could technically kill my Leafkin if they want to. Ooh, they're gonna cheat a Vampire into play. This could be scary. Henrika. Quite good. Opponent draws. And it's time for Lunis. Into... Could go Innkeeper and Lenor Elves. Plays around the Sacrifice ability on Henrika a bit better. Aerialist could grow pretty large here. So an army pumped by Henrika is going to be scary. Fatal push as well, so opponent off to a great start. Let's see if we can keep up. So I could double block the Null Priests. Next turn still play Sahid. That might be the play. They're gonna have a very large Aerialist as well. So not loving my chances, but... Don't think I want to keep taking damage here. Okay. So, Saheed and that sits. Opponent can use Henrika to pump their team as well. Alright, I guess we'll trade. For Henrika. Or I could take it in the hopes of pressuring Sorin, but they can also just replay that 5 mana. Although, maybe at this point I'm better off trading for Aerialist, since opponent can keep using Sorin to uh, pump their team. Bastion could also be used to proliferate. So I guess we won't even be able to kill Henrika if I block, because then they can proliferate and make this a 5-6, whereas here at least we don't lose Sahid. So I guess this is the correct block. Put on does proliferate. 
Now I can kill Sorin. But we're still under quite a lot of pressure. Can Oracle help me out? If there's a land on top, we can maybe keep casting spells. If not, we're in a bit of trouble, but it's probably still the play. No land on top. Can kill Sorin, but we're gonna die very quickly here. Anything in Venter's Fair could search up to help out. Can't think of a whole lot. Yeah, large flying creatures are a weakness of our strategy. Need to find a Whirler Rogue plus Thassa to keep jumping or... Maybe like a junk winder to keep their creatures tapped down. And Ayara might be able to deal the last couple points here. They can also deal damage directly to us with Sorin, so Solm on top is not going to help. I guess Reclamation Sage kills Mimic, then Leafkin taps for two mana. But I still don't really see a way out. Could crack a clue. See if there's a land on top. But then we're kind of back to the same spot. Alright, I think we're dead. So, guess I'll play out my turn. Kill Mimic. Crack a clue. And Oracle failed to do anything this game, sadly. All right, GG's. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing off against a Turgrid Sacrifice, or maybe Discard deck, but we've got a Keeper. Turn to Paradise Druids, can speed things up, and then Oracle sort of lets us play off the top of our deck, which should be good against an active Turgrid. Now we could have a slightly different curve, where we play Lonus first, but I think... Starting out with Oracle is never a bad idea. Burglar Rat makes me discard. Could get rid of the spinner to eventually reanimate with Dollhouse. Florahedron. So now it is tempting to go Lonus. Play Florahedron, but yeah, let's just get the Oracle out there. And then I could still play Florahedron as an extra land. Then there is the risk our opponent makes us discard two. If there's no land on top, I wouldn't be able to play Dollhouse necessarily if I don't play Florahedron here. So if I play Florahedron... I may be able to play Dollhouse, but if our opponent makes me discard two next turn, then of course we have to discard Dollhouse. So maybe I'll just keep this in hand for now. I guess there's a third option of my opponent killing Oracle, in which case playing Florahedron also would have been slightly better. But now I could maybe keep Florahedron as a creature to play with Lonus. Alright, so opponent does make me discard two indeed. Also mills Panharmonicon. So I'm a little bit more likely to find a land on top. Still nothing. Alright. Well, in this case I don't have much of a choice. But it is painful that uh, I'm not able to play out my dollhouse before it probably gets discarded. And such a promising start, too.
Do we see another discard too? All right. Thirsts kills Lonis. That's acceptable. Could have even put it in the graveyard to reanimate with Dollhouse. Still no land. Well, now I may be back to playing Lunis. Although if I play Sentinel, I'm more likely to be able to play Dollhouse next turn, but by holding it we play around a discard 2 again, which again our opponent probably would have played last turn, but it's not a guarantee. I'll play Lunis. So, both players stuck on three lands at the moment. Now if Lonus dies, I'm gonna let it go to the graveyard. And really hope there's a land next. Alright, Lonus dies. And we'll let that go to the graveyard. Kogla next, still nothing. Alright. Now we'll play Ornithopter. Probably keep Sentinel in hand. Uh oh, is this gonna be a Meat Hook Massacre for two or some other sweeper? Dread Presence. Okay, at long last, there's a land on top of our deck. Make that two. And then... Probably Kogla, fight the Dread Presence now. And our opponent has seen enough. Okay, so... Not the most beautiful game of magic ever, but... We eventually got out of it. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play. Our hand is not amazing. We're up against a Chulain kind of creature synergy deck. Probably has lots of ETB effects as well. So Rebuke to counter Chulain could be nice, but off to a pretty slow start. No mana accelerants. I think I got a mulligan. This is not amazing, but especially if we find blue mana along the way, could be okay. Although I'm going to have to draw it pretty soon, because we're on the play. Otherwise it's maybe a turn 3 visionary. Hmm. Yeah, no blue mana might make this a mulligan. And now do we have a keep? I think we do. So turn 2, play Lunas. Then I can play Ovia, Dockhand on the cheap. Serpent's gonna be pretty cheap to play before too long. Or I could keep Cultivator and Tazeret. I guess the two lane deck, a Gear Seeker, could be a decent win condition. Although the card draw from Tazeret might be more important. And extra mana of Cultivator is never a bad thing. Pack leader means her opponent's off to a slightly more aggressive start. Farm hands gets the planes. And the land is good. Also could have gone for just play a single one drop and then Sacrifice a clue token to keep hitting my land drops, but probably want to wait on sacking clues until we play mysteries first. Slogurk, the Overslime makes an appearance. And Sentinel, the draw. Yeah, probably play mysteries, although the Sentinel guarantees an extra mana next turn. Doesn't let me use Ovia. 
Close call. Maybe Sentinel's still the play, and then... Maybe I should crack a clue now to try and hit my land drop for the turn. Which I maybe should have started with. Alright, we'll pass it back. So Rise and Shine could be a good win condition. A little bit at odds with Ulvenwald Mysteries in terms of sacrificing our clues. But we'll see. Pona's got four mana, passes. And Cultivator could be an option, or I could tap out for Tesseret, although somewhat likely that our opponent's keeping up a counter spell here. Which makes me less likely to want to play Tesseret. Could also just use a Dockhand's ability, or even Ovia. Which is certainly reasonable if we want to play around a counter. So maybe I'll just pass. Alright, decisive denial. So those are gonna fight. Okay. What do I want to do about that? Probably use OVI in response. And there's Chulain. And now we can safely tap out for maybe a Tesseret. Which can draw two. This will be your still one step uh, no land, sadly, but... Got some good creatures in hand. Opponent goes digging with impulse. Finds Karyatids. So Chulain can eventually return creatures they control back to their hands. Mind Flare, quite good here, steals Ovia. Alrighty, so step one. Draw two with Tesserets. I know how this ends. Then got a couple options next. Probably want to develop my mana with Quandrix Cultivator. And then I could still potentially play a three drop depending on if I was on the play or draw, which I don't exactly remember. We played a tap land, our opponent played a one drop, I think. Then we played our two drop. So I think we were on the play, so this is gonna come into play tapped. Does it maybe mention somewhere? It does not. All right, I'll play Cultivator still. And then I'll just cry instead. Provisioner's not bad. Is it good enough? I think so, given that we have a rise and shine we want to work towards. Looking at the number of lands in play, not an easy way to tell if we're on the play, given Chulain can put additional lands in play. So, Slogurk shows up. Could sacrifice a clue token to here. Don't think that's necessary. So could play Lonus, then play Provisioner, then play Land. Could also just play a Coma, although could be stolen by the Mind Flayer for opponent once. 
So it's not the safest creature to run out. So I'm not hitting a Lonus provision or land. And I'll make a treasure token. And then maybe Tesseret still wants to draw. Brilliance comes easy. Could have started there too. Pass it back, discard. Thornwood Falls. Treasure Vault could still work with Rise and Shine. Sortooth with the city's blessing, so 5-5 five, five can put extra lands in play. And at some point they could use Ovia to make large tokens. But we're gonna try and go wide and kill them with the Rise and Shine. Tazeret doing a good job of keeping up with the card advantage. Okay, next, maybe play Whirler Rogue. Could play a Chitter Spitter and then still make a Squirrel. Could play Olvenwald Mysteries, but I don't intend to sacrifice too many clues. Or I could play an animator just to play more creatures out and trigger Lunas. Close call. I guess we'll go with Chitter Spitter. And then I don't need to play an untapped land. And make another treasure. And a wall of blossoms is fine. Could start making creatures unblockable, but I'm happy to have some blockers back. Opponent did pick up Memory Lapse, so I guess that's quite effective at countering my Rise and Shine. You're gonna flicker Mind Flare. Okay. Briefly get Ovia back, opponent steals Lonus instead. That works. And next turn they get to rebound it. Gotta remember to make a squirrel token. And then I can sacrifice a plant to put an acorn counter on the chitter spitter. Alrighty, start by drawing. I know what must be done. So no great answer to the mind flare just yet. Anything in the graveyard worth reanimating? No. So maybe it's time to play Coma, let the opponent steal it with Mind Flare, which will maybe get my Lonus back to make more tokens with. Could also start digging with the Merchant's Dock Hand instead. So, let's see, probably want an untapped land now. I'll make a food token now. And then I can still use a dock hand if I want to.
opponent did not cast Ephemerates, interestingly enough. So they're not interested in Coma. Form hand back in hand. So their opponent does appear to be tapped out, unless they've got a zero mana counter like Force of Negation. Could be a window for us to resolve Rise and Shine. So I suppose if I want to use Dock Hands. And I want to use Chitter Spitter. I'll have to sacrifice both treasures. Which maybe is not worth it. Since that all Chitter Spitter could also make a 1 1 with Ovia. Not that exciting. We'll just untap. And then I can get rid of the food token, maybe, or. Like a squirrel. Okay, start by drawing. You are still one step behind. Nothing too relevant. So do I want to play this Rise and Shine with Overload? Bonus got two good blockers. Yeah, I mean, we're definitely getting to that point. Make an extra treasure. And that worked. Go to combats, maybe play mysteries first. And then, let's see here, I guess Treasure Vault has Summoning Sickness, maybe should have played it last turn. How aggressive do I get? Send these in. Three threes. Can attack with Coma, make it indestructible. Alright, and our opponent has given up. A little bit too much power and toughness out of nowhere. Plus, could have also used Whirler Rogue to make some number of creatures unblockable. Sweet, so Rise and Shine gets the job done. Definitely one of the key finishers in this deck to eventually close out the game if we make lots of clue tokens. Sadly, didn't get to make as many clues as I wanted to, as we lost Lonus along the way, but... Uh, yeah, overall, this blue-green kind of token artifact deck is a pretty fun one, by no means one of the tier 1 decks, so don't expect to win every game, but it's definitely a good time and probably not too frustrating to play against, so it's a deck that's safe to play against your friends and will hopefully keep them coming back. So that'll do it for today's gameplay, wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day! I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.